ChatGPT search is here. As I predicted just a couple months ago when search GPT came out and I got access and I was using it, it just didn't make sense that it would be an entirely different product. And I said in that video, it's likely they're just gonna merge it into ChatGPT and that's what they did. This is a direct shot at perplexity and Google search. And as I've said so many times, if you think you're safe by building on top of OpenAI and they're not gonna build your functionality, Think again, there is significant platform risk when building on top of OpenAI. There's nothing preventing them from building your exact business. So I'm gonna show you around, then we're gonna do some comparisons between ChatGPT search and perplexity. Let's get right into it. This video is brought to you by Vulture, the easiest way to power your generative AI startup with the latest NVIDIA chips. But more on that later. So here's the intro blog post. The first thing you will notice is this little globe icon that says search. You have to click it and then it starts to search the web. Now, of course, immediately I had a ton of questions about how it works. Does ChatGPT index the web? And if they don't, how slow are the results? And we're gonna test all of these things. ChatGPT search is available at chatgpt.com as well as the desktop and mobile apps for pro and team users. It's gonna be rolled out to enterprise soon and eventually it's gonna be rolled out to free users. So again, the saying intelligence too cheap to meter shows how that is going to be manifested. Very similar to perplexity, it gives you sources and it also has special types of searches which perplexity has been adding recently. But now ChatGPT search has it built in. So a couple unique data types, weather, so built in weather, stocks, sports, news, and maps. The search model is a fine-tuned version of GPT-40 post-trained using novel synthetic data generation techniques, including distilling outputs from OpenAI 01 Preview. Now, that's super interesting. 01 Preview, as rumored, is being used quite a bit to generate synthetic data for the smaller models. ChatGPT Search leverages third-party search providers as well as content provided directly by our partners to provide the information users are looking for. So, as we've seen over the last few months, OpenAI has been on a partnership spree with content providers, and now we're seeing the fruition of those efforts. Some of the partners that they've worked with include Associated Press, Axel Springer, Condé Nast, Dot Mash, Meredith, Financial Times, Getty, Hearst, Le Monde, News Corp, Presa, Reuters, The Atlantic, Time, and Vox Media. That is a lot of real-time information that can be pulled in. So again, Google and Perplexity, now there is a third player in the space. All right, so I already have access to it right there. There is the search the web icon. So we're gonna try a couple searches and we're gonna see what works. And right next to it, I have perplexity and I'm gonna show you the results between the two. So the first thing I asked is something recent, something where I wanted it to find a specific thing, which I do usually go to Google for whenever I know what I'm looking for. And I'm not looking for an answer. I'm just looking for directions to that thing. I go to Google. So I asked it here, show me the episode of Joe Rogan's podcast with Donald Trump. And of course, course, here we go. And I have a source. It searched Google and I can click over to YouTube right there. Let's try it with perplexity now. Same question. Let's see. So I'm a subscriber to perplexity. It's definitely pretty fast. I'd say they're about even in speed. So in the chat GPT example, it basically just gave me the answer. You can watch it here. And it gave me the link. However, with perplexity, it gave me a lot of additional information. So it told me about it. It told me the interview details, the impact and reception, notable context. And of course, down in here, we actually find the link. So the path of finding the actual episode was not as direct as ChatGPT search, but I'd actually say that this is a great answer, but just very different. Another question that I had asked Perplexity a couple weeks ago, where it actually really hallucinated badly, I asked about Rob Thomas Party Down. Now, Party Down is a hilarious TV show. Rob Thomas is the creator of that TV show. Now, also Rob Thomas is the lead singer of a band called Matchbox 20. However, these are two different Rob Thomases and I did not actually know that while doing the search. So I simply said, Rob Thomas, party down. And here it is, television career, Cupid, Veronica Mars, party down. However, it goes on to tell me that this is the same person in Matchbox 20. And all of that part is false. So his experience in the music industry significantly influenced his work on Party Down. That is not true. A lot of what inspired Party Down dramatically were the years of playing in a band. That was my whole social scene. I hung out with people who were trying to make it. Just false. That is all false. So Rob Thomas, the lead singer of Matchbox 20, is different from Rob Thomas, the creator of Party Down. 
Now, let's just give that same search to ChatGPT search. So Rob Thomas party down, searching the web. All right, I must say ChatGPT search is very fast. It also tends to give shorter answers. It doesn't look as good. Perplexity gives much more robust answers with more types of different content, but that's fine. Rob Thomas, known for creating Veronica Mars. Okay, it was canceled after two seasons. In 2021, it announced a six episode revival. So that is all true. So let me simply ask it, is that Rob Thomas different from the lead singer in Matchbox 20? Yes, they are different people. All right, so it got that one right. Thanks to the sponsor of this video, Volt. Reap the benefits of the world's largest independent cloud provider when you bring your GPU workloads over to Vulture. They have the latest NVIDIA GPUs spanning 32 locations across six continents. Vulture delivers industry-leading price to performance and serious accessibility and reliability. Vulture's global, fully composable cloud infrastructure moves your applications closer to your users and frees you from vendor lock-in, allowing you to bring your own network and database solutions. And if you need to scale beyond just a single cluster, Vulture's Kubernetes engine allows you to take full control over your deployment, offering up a 100% free control plane. So if you're tired of waiting for GPUs from other providers, make sure to use Vulture. You can deploy at any scale immediately, and they have H100s, L40s, and more available right now. And you can get a fraction of a card or fully dedicated bare metal systems, which gives you full control over your hardware and your throughput. They also have one-click installation of all the applications you might need for advanced machine learning workloads, allowing you to get up and running in minutes, not hours. So experience the Vulture difference. Don't get bogged down by severe wait times or limited locations. Try it free today with a $300 credit for your first 30 days when you visit getvulture.com slash Berman. And make sure to use code Berman300 at checkout to get that credit. Thanks again to Vulture for sponsoring this video. Let's ask it another question with a little bit of geography to it. What are the best restaurants in Las Vegas? All right, so it didn't seem like it was using search, but it obviously did. It came up with this map. Here are some of the restaurants. It is an interactive map, which is really nice. Now, it's definitely not the best interface. I would have liked to have this list separate, not just sitting within the map, but fine, that's just a little issue. Let's ask the same thing to Perplexity now. So what are the best restaurants in Las Vegas? Searching the best restaurants in Las Vegas, looking at Yelp, summarizing the findings, and here it is, broken down by type. Yeah, so just overall, I think the way that Perplexity presents the information is better right now. It just seems much more complete. Now, obviously I can click the map and I have an interactive map within perplexity so it has all of that it has the yelp ratings right here and it tells me all about it so i just like this better so far all right let me try something that really takes a deep amount of search one of my favorite games factorio just released a new update so i've been playing it a lot lately one of the searches i did was in factorio are long arm inserters slower than regular inserters if you don't know what any of this means don't even worry it's just something that is kind of really in the weeds of this game. And so let's find out. All right, so I don't even think it used search for this one. So yes, long arm inserters in Factorio are slower than regular inserters, which I don't think is actually true. So I'm gonna ask this same question to Perplexity now. And I don't think it did a search. So same question, Perplexity. I would have liked it to give me a reference, but it didn't. So let's see if it does it here. Here it does. So here's the Wiki Factorio and no long handed inserters are actually faster. Here's how they compare. So here's the regular inserter. Here's the long handed inserter items per second. And yeah, so it gives me links to the actual reference. Now, here's one thing I noticed perplexity always uses search. It will never just give you an answer. As far as I can tell is all of my searches. It does go through the process of coming up with a plan, searching the web, and then giving me the answer. ChatGPT, I think it decides what to use and when. So sometimes it'll just give you the answer. Sometimes it'll actually use search. So for this previous one, it did not. So it does have the chance to hallucinate more so than actually gathering the information from the web. So here it actually says the long arm inserters have a rotation speed of 216 degrees per second and regular inserters rotate faster. 
That's not true. The long arm inserters rotate faster, but that's also not necessarily what measures their total speed and whatever. I'm getting way too much in the weeds. I actually think Perplexity's answer was much better. All right, let's see it's real-time stock information. What are the top performing tech stocks today? So definitely searching the web. So as of October 31st, which is today, Halloween, we have these stocks. Now, I wish it actually gave me some charting, which it doesn't seem like it did, because in their blog post, it does show this nice charting. So let's see. So give me a chart for Roblox. All right, I still can't get it to give me the chart as shown in their blog post. Very interesting. All right, let's test this against perplexity now. What are the top performing tech stocks today? Okay, so doing a good search, top performing tech stocks. It did give me a list of other stocks, not the list that ChatGPT search gave me. And so it said top five tech leaders by performance, magnificent seven performance, sector growth leaders, but not quite what I asked for. These are all today's prices, whereas Perplexity gave me the year performance, I believe. So very different answers, both fine, just different. Let me ask a little bit more of perplexity. So I'll say, what about top performers as of today's price movement? And let's see if it's going to give me the right answer now. I apologize. I don't have access to real time or today's stock market data. Okay. So it was not able to give me that. So I'd say ChatGPT search definitely won that one. And it's getting it from Investor's Business Daily. So yeah, very impressive. And now I think I just have to do some extensive testing of both. And I'm going to use both. The thing I'm not going to use likely is Google search. Sorry, Google. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.